In this video, we're going to take a look at a brown ink by Roher and Klinger, their Sipia. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the brown ink playlist, so if you want to see more brown inks, you can find that down there. I'm an ink guy, and let's take a look at the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 15 seconds to dry. It's a decent solid brown. The medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 25 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no color variation and we're not getting it, and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Duke 209 with a Fude nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. Minor ghosting on the medium. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 23 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 38 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And the smear test, I don't think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very olivey tone at the very bottom, but moving up we see a very light khaki brown and a dark brown towards the top and at the very top a very bright kind of turquoise color. Now the one on the right that was let dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked in the water, that olivey tone is all gathered at the bottom. It is not moving, showing a little bit of permanence. The light brown moves its way up, gathering, and that turquoise is very much the same, but it does say that we might see a little bit of resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine, lighter than the stub, no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 17 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 28 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we don't get it. And the smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it seems to perform fairly well. What's moving over there is really from the swab, which is strange, but generally it's holding together very well. I would feel safe using it in a note-taking situation, especially if I needed a highlight. Now, water's barely moving it. You see that dot is only a little bit lighter. It's only moving some of the darkest tones. Pen flush is moving more of it. You start to see a little bit coming through, and the one-third bleach solution got rid of a bunch but turned it yellow. Interesting. Now, the good news here is it only took water to get this out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on P. Berger paper. Now this is a student grade paper, so we don't always have the highest expectations. I'm just circling the dots that came a little deeper into the page. I do think this would stop me, but may not stop many from using the back of the page with the extra fine. The stub did very similar. Now the thing is, the medium, you could not use the back of the page on the medium. And in all of them, none of them touched the page underneath. So it does have that good going for it. You just can't use the back of the page for the medium, but you might for the extra fine. The 1.1 stub, no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Really very good performance on this paper. 
The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and three seconds to dry. Great performance on this paper. The medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation. That's really where I haven't filled in the lines entirely on the extra fine. We did not get color variation in the writing in the smear test. You could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Roher and Klinger's Sepia has a viscosity of 1.59, making this a wet ink. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity and all of that stuff is done, then there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at the next writing sample done on Levenger paper. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine, lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Medium the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it, and the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Roher and Klinger's Sepia has an average dry time of 24 seconds, meaning you need to be a bit patient, because this takes a little longer than normal to dry. The last writing sample is done on Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and eight seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a tiny bit of color variation, though there is none. The medium shows none, and that's what we got, none. The smear test says you could recover them if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Roher and Klinger Sepia, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a blue ink by Karen Dash because I like putting blues and browns together. I chose Magnetic Blue. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Roher and Klinger's Sepia? This is a often lighter, dusty tone. In its darker tones, I flat out don't care for it. The lighter tone is pleasant, but I don't get the shading that I have become accustomed to from brown inks. It's well performing, it's just not right for me. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? As I said, I really don't care for its darkest tones at all, so I want the lighter tones that I can get from a medium flow medium pen or a dry medium pen or even better, a dry fine. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Private Reserve's Fast Dry Tanzanite.